Hey everyone, Glimps here, and today we're back with a new video. We're going to be talking about Ayato versus Sino. Just to, so I did do a, this video a couple days ago. Um, well, not a couple days ago. It was like at the start of the 4.2 patch where I talked about all the four characters coming out, and it's going to be slightly more specifically tailored just between Ayato and Sino if you know that you are looking for a DPS rather than a support character. Now, really quickly, just start out the video. I know I said that I wasn't pulling anymore, but um, I guess we can do like a, one more pull. <laughs> I've been pulling slightly. Let's see if we get gold. Nope, nothing. That's okay. Because I do have guaranteed and I kind of want to save for C2 right in. But we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm pretty close. I'm at like 57 pity right now after that, I think. But so first, I'll do uh, like a with Farina team, without Farina team. I haven't actually tried Ayato out with Farina, so this will be my first time trying it out with you guys. I have tried Sino a lot with Farina. Sino works really well with Farina. Um, now really quickly before I get into like damage showcase and teams and everything, let's talk about just in general what these two characters are best for. So Ayato is really good at um, like AoE Hydro damage. The only thing that's holding Ayato back right now is I feel like, well Child has a higher damage ceiling, but Ayato is a lot easier to use and more, I, in my opinion, more useful in a lot, um, in a lot more spaces. So his other competition is Nouvellet right here. Um, Nouvellet overall is probably a better character in general, but if you do like Ayato, go ahead and use him a lot. Like, um, I have my Ayato at C4, just, <laughs> this was a time I was trying to pull for Diluc and I just, I didn't get him. Uh, and there's a couple characters like that, like this. That's how that happened, <laughs> but that's besides the point. Um, so just for the case of the showcase, like this is just his E level, which isn't crazy or anything. And this right here, <coughs> this does nothing. Like, so this is just using his ult. Nearby party members have increased normal attack speed, which doesn't really do anything for him. This is just nearby party members and everything. This doesn't, have, this, it doesn't impact his damage almost at all. So don't really worry about these, this one. And then this one is slight damage buff, but it's not the end of the world. C1 right here. So the damage is increased by 40% against opponents with 50% HP or less. So pretty much your your uh, damage against the, the slashes that he does is just increased once they get below half HP. And um, you get stacks. It's, it's super simple. Don't even worry about the stacks. You get them instantly, basically. But basically his maximum stack count is increased to 5, which is just damage increase, I'm pretty sure. And then whenever he has at least 3 of the stacks, his max HP is increased by 50%. So this is just more HP scaling, because his kit is partial HP scaling, but you don't want to run him with attack sands. So both, um, well I'll get back to like the comparisons in a second, but I do have him at signature weapon right here. And I have him level 90, I've had him that way for a while. Right here, 77, 191. So pretty solid crit ratio. Uh, 1700 attack, 117 EM. Overall pretty good, and I'll show you guys my Sino. My Sino definitely, the crit ratio does look a bit better. I have better artifacts on him. Um, so right here, this is his signature weapon here. I run him on Thundering Fury. Oh yeah, Ayato I have on Heart Adept. There's a bunch of other artifact options. I'll go over that in a second. Um, right here, so this weapon's good for him. I'll go over other options in a second as well. 270 EM. So he wants some attack, some EM scaling. Don't worry too much about it. His attack does look kind of low, but right here, his weapon, so... Um, it takes 52% of the EM and turns it into bonus attack and like this kind of stacks up gives more EM as attack and everything. It's just so everything kind of works out at the end. So I have 207 EM, uh, 1200 attack, 80 to 241. Overall, I think that's a pretty good ratio to, I mean, you're probably, you're not going to get that unless you have insane artifacts and, and the signature weapon, but, um, I feel, <coughs> oh, and him, I have at C2. So he and, um. Ayato, both signature weapon, some of their better constellations that are not C6. So you guys are going to see like pretty evenly with about even investment. Because Ayato's C3 and C4 aren't anything too crazy, just to point that out. Um, so real quick, if this is all you wanted to see in the video so far, I do feel like Ayato is definitely going to be a better, uh, a more versatile choice. But each of the characters kind of just depends on more of what you need. Like I just talked about Ayato's replacements being like uh, competition, I guess, being child and... Um, Nouvellet, but Sino's replacements, um, there's going to be a lot of different characters that um, you can use as electro carries, but let me, <coughs> let me kind of just go through this real quick. So, right, just because I don't have the other electro characters as leveled, so I'll keep them all in the same place. So Sino, you can do his job with uh, Raiden, but I feel like Raiden only after C2, because C2 is a really big damage buff for her. So C2 Raiden's pretty good, and I guess you can do Kaching with Dendro, but I feel like Kaching and Sino are kind of on similar ground. Okay, 
Kitching definitely got a lot better after Dendro, but she's still not like a top carry or anything. And I think Sino's around the same damage as Kaching, I guess. Maybe slightly. This is completely fields crafting. This isn't like completely numbers backed up. But personally, off of what I've seen, I think Sino's around Kaching level of damage. If anything, I've seen him like in my mind, he does slightly more, but it's I don't think it's anything too different, whichever way that leans. Um. So yeah, those are pretty much those are his only electro carry kind of counterparts that you can do. There are other, like, Aggravate, Spread, um, what's it called? Aggravate, Spread, and Quicken DPS, like Alhatham. And he kind of runs similar team cons, but they're not, like, the same use at all, really. So, <coughs> um, so here's pretty much what Ayata does. His burst just increases normal attack damage and normal attack speed, I believe. I, I'm not sure about the speed. We'll look. Let's see. Um, so look right here at his ult. Yeah, it's just normal attack damage bonus. So pretty much that's all we're about. And the normal attack speed is from the constellations. I don't, I'm not sure if that works on him. But if anything, it's only 15%, so that's not really going to mess with his damage at all. So, and then pretty much his E, you just do this, and you literally just hold this charge attack. Mine just holding the left click down. So, super easy for mobile players. That's something to also think about as well. Like, skill level and everything, Ayato is really not super... <laughs> <laughs> crazily bound by anything. I like to play this kind of more of like a hyper carry Aito, not relying on relax reactions at all. Um, it's also really good to switch out. I mean, I don't recommend this type of team. I just wanted a reason to play Albedo. <laughs> um, one thing that people do that I can note is they do like Aito and um, they're on Aito and Yoimiya at the same time. And then like whatever two supports they want to be applying on their offfield. Because Ayato, you can go in with his burst, do some normal attacks and everything. And then switch into Yoimiya, normal attack and burst. And they kind of just like, you just swap back and forth between them with this certain character setup. And it works really nicely, just because um, they their cooldowns kind of line up a bit. And I feel like their ults also definitely help each other out. Like he increases normal attack damage, then Yoimiya is increasing the party's attack. So swapping them back and forth there works pretty good. Now this, yeah, like I'm saying, this wasn't um, his best team. This is one I do like to run him in. You can also, here's some other good options you can run him like for support. Bennett's pretty good. Um, you could do Jean, just like if you want to get some extra swirling, don't have Kazuha. That'd be a good healing <coughs> healing unit. Uh, I really like running him with Ganyu personally, just for some special use cases, which I'll talk a bit more about in the future. But, um, so I have support Ganyu. You can also run Ayato as a support character, which... Um, which is why I kind of talk about how versatile he is, but we'll talk about that more for, just for his Hydra application. Um, Nahida's a really good one with him if you want to do Bloom, or you can also do it like with the Nihilo teams and um, use him as the use Ayato as the driver, which is a pretty good thing. Yunjin works really well with him for a bit. Uh, you, you can use Rosaria, it's fine. Like Diana's fine. Uh, she's really good with him if you want to do it like a Taser team. Fischl works pretty good, I believe. <coughs> Uh, I don't really think you should run with Xing Chou. You can if you want, but it's nothing. Uh, I don't really care. Not a fan, really. I know a lot of people do like this, but personally, like, like I don't have my Xing Chou that invested, so personally, I can't give the best car like guarantee on that, but I'm not really on the Xing Chou train, so you don't have to play him. I get away fine with it. Zhang Ling's also pretty good with him. You can run Deha if you want, just like as some extra resistance interruption and some damage buff, because you don't... Because like anytime you're not charge attacking, you want to... Um, because he's very stationary, right? So characters like Deha does like damage resist or Zhang Li are really good just because they'll keep you from having to move as much. I mean, Candace you can use, but I don't think she's worth building just for that reason. I'm like half in the middle of building her. I do think that she's a pretty cool character though, so I might get around to her later. You can do Toma, I guess Chi Chi, like Lynette, Sai, just for like swirling and everything, but there's not anything too particular there. Mika, if you just want attack speed, but like I'm saying, same thing, you don't really need it. And then if you're like a newer player, you can run with Lisa and Barbara, Kale, that type of thing. That'd work as well. But um, for this, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, I'll probably just run like very generic team. Pretty Most teams is kind of like DPS and then these three sub DPS characters. So um, <laughs> those are the type of characters you would need to make Ayato work. Basically just like a pretty good animal unit that can swirl with Viridescent and do any buffing, debuffing, whatever you need. Uh, a shielder, like healer, some type of sustainability, and then mostly just like an elemental applicator and another. Um, and this is a buff here. Now him by himself isn't really an a, isn't not a good off field applicator. We need a pyro Shingcha that'd make everything so much easier for characters like this. But I do like to swirl Bennett and Kazuha ult together, kind of like how you do Sunfire Gene as well. You can replace him with Gene, get the same results, and you're not going to die at all. So that's pretty good too. And then we'll take a look at Sino. Here's some good teammates from right here. 
<coughs> uh, Sino's a lot more limited in his team picks than Ayato. Because Ayato's, like I'm saying, he's very versatile. He can be a support, DPS, he can do on field, off field, whatever you want. And then um, Sino, he, I feel like if you like Sino, go for him. He's going to be a lot of fun to play. If you're just look, caring about numbers or you like care about meta reasons or you're kind of on the fence, don't go for him. Because I feel like until recently, until I had this exact team right here, I've kind of thought he was uh, slightly lackluster. Like he was one of I had him signature weapon, I had him C2. I was super excited about this character because he looked so sick. And then his the numbers just weren't really there. So it's kind of like uh, discouraging, I would say. But I feel like if you really like the character and if you um, if you just want someone fun to play, he works really well there. And like this team in specific, this team specifically, I've noticed has been really really good. And I've done a bunch of videos testing him out because I feel like this is like the perfect team for him. But let me talk about just really quickly in case you don't have that. Um, what I was running before was instead of Freena, I was running Raiden in place just to keep battering Sino. Because one thing that a lot of people don't talk about is that Sino has really high energy requirements. So you can counteract that with like another uh, Electro character like Raiden that makes a lot of particles or just someone with any type of Favonius weapon, that type of thing you can kind of switch on and off. Um, I buy Zeus prototype Amber so he does increase um, his own energy, which... <coughs> I don't... Does Prototype Amber... I don't believe it does it for the team, sorry. Let's see. Use Elemental Burst for 4.5 energy every two seconds. All party members are generally HP. Okay, so yeah, the energy is just for him. But um, he's able to keep his burst up pretty good, so I think that he needs a lot of burst time. So Prototype Amber type thing for him is good. And then if you want to run Favonius on her or her, either or, that'd be that'd work as well. Um, so let's take a look really quickly at other possible teammates like i feel uh, these three right here in particular are really really good and then the is just really good at applying the quicken and everything but you could also use like dendro mc or um or i guess yao yao there's not too many you could use like kale but i just i feel like if you're using kale and you it's not because you really like her just go dendro mc dendro mc works pretty good before i got nahida that's what i was using and that worked fine uh, so let's look at some other teammates you can use here um they, like this one's gonna be a lot shorter <laughs> um hmm i guess gene kind of not great though uh same thing it's not ben is not great because sino is very mobile and you're moving out of the way so no uh you could kind of swap in between mona and everything if you really want to make it work but it's gonna be tough same thing with sucrose like sucrose would be good for swirling but i feel like there's better uses uh she'd be pretty good as long as you have like some type of resistance to interruption so he definitely likes resistance to interruptions because all of his skills and everything that you're pressing has to be in like concise timing so having someone to like resistance interruption would be better than just a straight healer but it is good to have her just kind of in the background if you do want some of that additional healing if your shielder is not the best or anything same thing like that one is good she's a shielder and a healer she kind of gets everything but the, the reactions aren't really there <laughs> um like, Kirara would be kind of good there if you want to do, like, her and another Dendro Applicator. Like, she could be the shield position and then have someone else, like Nahida and that type of thing. But, yeah, she'd help with the aggravates and everything. Fischl's a really good teammate with him. Uh, so is, like, Shingcho, Yalan. Both of those characters are really good with him. Uh, personally, I'd prefer Yalan just from, like, the damage bonus to kind of help with that and then run someone else for sustain. Like, you could run Jangling, but I, j I don't recommend it. And then this might be good for resistance interruption, but I feel like there's just better characters than Deha. I don't really think... I'd prefer you just run a shield on her. On uh, Sino. Same thing with Toma. Like, you could, but not the biggest fan. Um, and, yeah, Yaya's pretty good, but I like I'm saying, you'd, you'd probably rather have a shield like Zhongli. Zhongli, Noel, Diona. <coughs> that type of thing. But yeah, so... Off what I've tested, this is by far the best team for him. Now let's just go really quickly into like weapon and artifact options, and then I'll show you guys some different damage tests on that. So right here, artifacts. Um, Heart Adept is really good on him. That's like my one off piece. Let's go through these artifacts real quick. <coughs> this piece is okay. I ran this Heart Adept domain. This was my most ran domain, and I just got terrible luck with it. So I'm glad I finally got the Switch Child off of it, but <laughs> Hayato is still kind of... Stuck on some of these pieces, which is why he has a pretty good off-piece feather. So yeah, this piece kind of mid. Uh, this piece is really good. I'm really proud of this piece. That was super lucky just to get that. And <laughs> I know I could run it on Eula or Razor or whatever, but I just, I just wanted it to go on someone who hadn't, who didn't have a good feather. I'm telling you, this was my most ran piece, and I don't have a single like above 20 off-piece feather that works. Like 
these are all like kind of mid and it's just this is just the best way that it's worked out so right here attack 12 percent crit damage 58 em this is yeah we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel with these artifacts uh <laughs> this is pretty solid right here because this er kind of helps with the hybrid like if you want to do off field support type thing we got crit em so that, that was actually pretty solid for an on piece set it's not the best goblet in the world but i'm willing to take that and then crit rate pretty good amount of crit damage some hp just for the scaling not that doesn't matter too much uh wasted defense roll but it's whatever and then some em which is also pretty good for any type of elemental reactions you want to do with him so that's pretty good oh wait um <coughs> i mean i was running him on hp sands for a bit you can you don't need to but I, it was only because that's like all i had <coughs> like here you go this is what i was running him on before and then i switched him over to attack attack is definitely better but like the HP sands. If it's all you have and like you're starting out and want to work on the build, you can try. You can start out with HP because he does have slight HP scaling. But I, it's definitely I'd rather go for attack. Um, so some artifacts that's that do do pretty well. Uh, I guess you could now run the Mara Chasse Hunter just because <coughs> if you're running it with Farina, like this is only if you're running it with Farina, Farina consistently for the extra crit rate. Um, don't run that. That's not a good one for him. I know people talk about. You could do like some two piece of t uh, two piece two piece attack, uh, some like any two piece attack sets you can run on him. Same thing with, um, I guess some EM if you're gonna run him strictly in like a vaporized team or melt or not ma melt, like vaporize electro charge that type of thing, and then um, for like then two piece EM any of the two piece hydro damage bonus like you do two piece nymph stream and two piece um, heart of depth. Uh, I guess like same thing if you want to go off field you could run two piece ER. <laughs> but yeah that's pretty much all that i would recommend let's see oh and four piece gladiator a lot of people talk about this set being pretty good because pretty much just uh normal and normal attack damage increase so people say this set's pretty solid personally i just prefer the heart of depth set because i was farming it a lot for child and really didn't want these pieces to go to waste once i switched them over to a new artifact set then for weapons uh, obviously a signature jade cut is really good that's what i was using on him at the when i first pulled him uh before i had this weapon you could run this new uh let's see what this is enthal skill and burst so this isn't increasing the burst damage burst hits an opponent crit rate. okay this isn't too good for him but if you just want to stat stick a crit rate and you have it lying around don't have anybody to use it on it's a pretty solid choice you could like same thing you could do some em pieces if you want to do it like that this attack sword works really well that actually looks pretty good on him but <laughs> it's not like his best in slot or anything. This one's also pretty solid right here, just because normal attack, normal charge attack damage increased, so that's pretty solid. Support says, you know, just run him on pretty much whatever ER weapon you want. Like, this weapon will be fine at the beginning of the game, not too hyped on it. Um, not this weapon unless you want to run him in, like, a taser comp. Um, don't run him on HP swords. Like, same thing with ER only in specific circumstances. But, yeah, pretty much just... Mostly you want crit or attack. I'd lean more towards like a crit weapon just for stat stick and I get your attack elsewhere. So yeah, it's attack 1700 right now. And then some HP scaling throughout that. <coughs> um, overall, it's pretty good. And then Sino weapon options. Sino just recently got a pretty good free to play option. Or not free to play, small spender option. This one right here is pretty good. So you're going to get like uh, more elemental mastery, some crit rate and everything. So this weapon's pretty solid. This one, if you played the event, this is also a good option. This is good. This, if you want to play more in the overworld, like, <coughs> I don't recommend bringing this into the hardest content in the game, but this one right here is pretty good for, um, just like overall, you could do this in like ER sense, because one part, here's uh, Zajef, this content creator, if you guys don't know who he is, he, um, he talked about Sinoburst, he said, playing Sino in the overworld is like, you have Sinoburst, you use it, now the hill of Troll's dead, and you don't have Sinoburst. And now, you, and it's like, you do no damage outside of his burst, which is one problem I do have with him, where Ayato definitely, like, is better in the overworld, and Sino, I feel like, is pretty good in longer fights, where, like, he's, his damage is more, um, almost front-loaded, but it's all in his burst, you know? So, kind of give and take. This is also a really good weapon for him, if you want to focus more on, like, how much attack percent you have and everything. This is good, um... This weapon you can make work, just increased attack and everything. It's not like insane, but it's pretty solid. And this is good if you just want like a stat stick, but you, same thing, don't really worry too much about that. Like this would be fine, but it's not really doing too much for your burst. And then same thing, this if you kind of just want to play them in the overworld like a lot and just have fun. Like the, these are pretty solid options for that, but nothing insane. Uh, you could also go Dragon's Bane, I bet, and then just kind of <coughs> run it with like Farina, Yolan, that type of thing. 
Um, let's see. This is it's whatever. You can. I don't really recommend it. I mean, it, it would work fine because it's EM. You get increased skill damage. You can use this one pretty solidly. It's just probably wouldn't be my personal first pick. And I also don't really like these craftables because it takes a long time to get them. And then <coughs> I don't like farming the uh, Inazuma rocks. But <laughs> like I'm saying personally, if you have enough and you don't spend them on anything you can, then yeah, feel free. Yeah, those are pretty much all the main weapon choices of the ones that I have to at least demonstrate, and I think I have most of the attainable weapons. There's a few I'm missing, but that's pretty much everything. Like, same thing, you could run them on this, I don't recommend it. Pretty much you want to go, like, crit or EM, and then if there's anything with, like, really high attack and crit, then that's also something that's pretty solid for him, that you could run. Like, pretty good options. Artifact sets. Thundering Fury is my personal favorite, but you pretty much either always run them on Thundering Fury, or, wherever this set is, or Guild of Dreams. That's also a pretty good set here, just increases like EM and triggers like the everything from like attack and the dendro elemental reactions. So this just stacks up a bunch of EM. But like I'm saying, personally, I prefer Thundering Fury. Um, I mean, you could, let's see, Sword, Claymore, Polem, normal attack damage by 35. You could, but I know, pretty much just go with the first two I recommended, and then if you don't have any of those and you don't really feel like farming, you could go like two-piece, two-piece, EM, EM, or EM attack, EM electro damage bonus. Just any mix of those would be fine. And then for him, you pretty much... <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I swear I don't have a EM. Yeah, okay, let me... Okay. So you go EM, Electro Damage, Crit. That's pretty much how you want to run it most times. Unless you do go Jade Spear, which is Zhao's weapon, then you probably want to run this one on attack percent just because you'll get more out of it than the EM. So that's pretty much everything. Oh, here, we'll go through my artifacts really quickly. Uh, I farmed this set like crazy. So Sino coming out was actually the whole reason I started this channel. Just farming for Sino, talking about him, uh, pulling for him. That was everything that really got me into the content creation. So... Yeah, if you want to see old videos of me farming, like, a lot, I don't know, the quality of videos was probably a lot worse back then, but we're getting better as we go, getting better at talking, articulating our thoughts quicker. We'll, we'll see how it goes from there. Like, comment, subscribe if you have made it this far, and if you do enjoy this type of content. Sorry, this is getting kind of in-depth, in depth, but these are two characters that I like to play a lot and just want to make sure that I'm not leaving too much out. So this right here, this is a pretty solid piece. Um, a lot of crit, the other stats are kind of useless, but this is a really good stat stick here. This piece is like perfect. EM, double crit line, and EM, you want all, ER, double crit line, and EM, I mean, you want all of that for Sina, that's like perfectly on set. Uh, this is my off piece. It's, it's all right, I guess. The HP is kind of made um, pretty good amount of crit damage, and then the ER this is also always helpful. Electro damage bonus on set with double crit line and attack percent, which also, because he scales with attack and EM, so this is, this is really good to get on set. And right here, crit damage, some crit rate. The HP sucks. This could definitely be improved a bit with some more crit rate or better stats like ER, EM. But <coughs> can't complain too much. The rest of the pieces are pretty good. And I don't really think it's worth farming like an insane amount more and throwing everything into the strong box the way I was just to try and get something with other stats here, at least for now. Maybe if I get like really into playing Sino some more. I have been playing a lot more with Farina. But if I start getting like really into playing more, I might go back and try to min-max this artifacts. But most characters, it's not really worth it after you get to a certain point. Like, I think this is a pretty good ratio here for now. But I'll just, I'm not going to worry about it. And same thing with this, where like I could go back and farm longer. But I farmed that set for so long. And this is the best I got. Definitely could be better, but... So yeah, they're both at around um, like equal time investment, I'd say. If anything, I put more time into these artifacts and they're a little bit worse. But I do feel like uh, Ayato definitely has a higher damage seal damage floor than Sino. So a damage floor, if you don't know, just really quickly, is like, for like minimal investment, how much damage will the character do? And they definitely do, like, uh, Ayato, I feel like, just has the lower damage ceiling, which means that, or lower damage floor, I mean, which means that, like, with less investment, is gonna do a lot more for your account than Sino would. Sino's kind of a hyper carry, which means you need to invest a lot into him, and like, all the other characters with him, where Ayato, you can kind of just throw a bunch of characters together, and it'll work, because he's pretty self-sufficient. Where Sino is, yeah, you need a lot of teammates working for him to like buff him up and everything, make him work great. And then if you do that, everything, um, you're going to have a lot of fun with him. Like I'm saying, he's never going to be the best, most meta character in the entire game, but he's pretty fun. Let's go do a test run on Masanori. Just, we'll do the two characters first without Farina, and then we'll go back and do them with Farina afterwards, just so you guys can kind of see what's going on here. So, yeah, I haven't been testing Masanori in a while because I've only really been doing like demonstration videos and ever since Farina came out I've been really excited to kind of showcase different characters and how well she works with them and everything so I just think that <coughs> it's definitely worth 
taking a look at. I know some people get bored with seeing Masanori all the time, but I don't know, I feel like this is definitely the best damage test, and then when you're in Abyss, you get a bunch of like different Abyss buffs, and it's not exactly like the most ideal number. Okay, so the only problem with this right now... Okay, wait, actually... Okay, let me think of this rotation real quick. Okay, so I don't I don't play this team very often. Normally I run it with Albedo right here in the fourth slot, but okay, so... Okay, so we're going to use his ult, and then Swirl, Bennett, Swirl... Okay, yeah, everything should be fine. Oh yeah, and Ayato's ult lasts like a crazy long time. So you can see the off-field Hydra application right here. Just to, you know, not really worry about it too much. So we'll swirl the pyro. And... Okay, here you go. So you're seeing like around 40k slashes with all everything going on. So that's... <laughs> I'd say that's pretty good, actually. And then you can kind of just... And this is kind of like his base damage without too much buffing going on, just the swirls from Kazuha. So the thing right here is, let's see, one thing to notice is that like, so when you just press this, you get this little statue thing right here, right? And I, that pretty much breaks when you get close to an enemy. So what you can do is, <coughs> here, this isn't really like an awake enemy right now, but what you do is you just stand really close to them and then you go like this and stand next to them. And then that's, so then they'll like, they'll attack that and it'll break and everything. And then you pretty much get all the stacks right away. And then your charge attacks are going to do more damage. Uh, or the slash, the shing, shing, shing thing. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what the actual term for that's called. It's, I think it's some Japanese word. But, so there's his team there. Let's go ahead really quickly, go back here. And we're going to switch on to a Farina team that could run with him. So you're pretty much just going to need Farina and a healer is like the main two slots. So we'll go Baizu, because like I said before, he's the best healer for Farina pretty much at the time being. Other than Jin Jin and Charlotte are also pretty good, but I just don't have them fully maxed out and I don't want to really misrepresent them. But in my opinion, I'd probably want to run Baizu anyways. Um, and let's see for the last one. We'd probably just run Kazu as well. I mean, or you could run Jangling there, but same thing, not really a fan. So let's just do Kazuha to Swirl and see how much extra the damage buff gets. So... We won't really need the EM from his... buff right now. Okay, so my Kazuha is C2, <coughs> which means that he does get a bit more EM. Like, slightly more EM from... all the things there. But, I mean... I already have, like, a pretty base amount of EM, so as long as you stack EM, like, already... Because after a certain point, e after, like, a hundred and something, the EM kind of starts falling off how useful it is. So, this one's pretty much, uh, wrong spot. <laughs> so this right here is pretty much just, um, an extra energy recharge. And this right here, so it increases, um, so everyone's increase, ev everyone's EM is increased by 200 when you're in the field. So, okay. Yeah, so that's pretty much just gives like 200 more EM, but like I'm saying, it's not that big of a deal if you're... <laughs> if you're not, um, <coughs> it's not that big of a deal if you stack like some EM on Ayato at all. Just this is kind of like the upper end of what you'd see with more investment in your Ayato's EM. Okay, so let's go give this a shot right here. And, oh, not there. I'm just so used to that now. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take a quick teleport. Okay, I see, sorry, I was just moving something around. Okay, so this one should be pretty easy. And the other thing here is that you can't really mess up your swirls just because <laughs> the only thing you can really swirl here is Hydra since they didn't want to add a Dendro reaction for some weird reason with Animo. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we'll just give some time for the stacks to go out, and we'll take our time here. Oh, and he's pretty much already dead, but let's see. So yeah, you're getting some lower numbers, but yeah, look at how quick that was. Like, <laughs> that team was pretty solid, man. <laughs> and then everything dies too quickly, and then you have, like, no ER. <laughs> oh, I didn't even use his burst there. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, we didn't even need his burst, and you saw that the damage number was like 30k already, so that was pretty similar 
even like not even though uh, what's his name Kazuo's burst wasn't really doing anything to impact it there and the same reason that you missed out on all the normal attack damage from Ayato's burst you can see that that one pretty quickly so he is pretty he's definitely a solid character to run with Farina because the damage bonus is really nice I don't want him to die from this. Here, let's switch these guys. Okay. And we got all these bursts back. So let's teleport away and then take a look at the Sino team with and without Farina. <coughs> it's pretty crazy though. Now, just because they released a character that's so broken, all the other characters in the future almost seem like they're going to be balanced off of having Farina. Okay. So, this team right here pretty close to what I was running before, just... There you go. So you get slightly more energy and you lose out on a lot of damage buff. But, like I'm saying, Raiden's just... Raiden's a pretty good character overall, so... If this is the type of team you want to run, that's fine as well. It's just, know that it's not going to be doing as much damage, but like I'm saying, that's the same thing with every character in the game. You're just going to be doing the same damage, but less without Farina. Like... But like I'm saying, she's not completely necessary. There are other teams that run perfectly fine without her. It's just most DPS characters, when you play them like a hyper carry, are going to be more focused towards damage buffs from Farina. It just kind of helps most of the characters in the game. So let's give this a shot really quickly. Oh yeah, and the other thing that's good here is that Nahida increases your EM by 250 if you, if you have her at uh, 1000 EM when you use her burst. Okay, so... You can kind of see here, like, how good the timing has to be for all of this. You can see pretty good numbers here. And because I do have him... on Thundering Fury, I can use more ease, like, throughout the rotation. You saw there? But pretty much, when you're not on Thundering Fury, you just wait for the golden eye, for the eye to show up, and then you press his skill, and that's, that's when you get, like, the increased damage. <coughs> So yeah, overall, that was pretty cool. Uh, everything went pretty well. So let's go ahead and get our burst back and everything, and then you guys can see how well it works with Raiden. But you guys, as you can see, if you put in the time and the effort for like these DPS characters, they're going to be good. Like, I'm not saying every character in the game is great, but if you want to make them work, you can make the vast majority of them pretty solid. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Same thing, that was pretty good energy-wise because we had Raiden and everything. So, <laughs> that's something else you need to remember. So, like, run it with Raiden and an ER weapon or Sans, and you can kind of play this team more in the overworld type of thing, because a lot of it is not burst dependent. So, that's actually pretty nice. Um, oh, I'm not going back. I'm here. Then we'll switch this out for Farina. And this team right here has been pretty perfect. Like, with Raiden, it is still pretty good, so I'm not saying... Like, if you don't have... Uh, if you don't have Farina, you can see right there that that's pretty solid damage, like... I don't even know if that was daytime or nighttime. It's like, it doesn't even matter at this point. This kind of just damage show. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure that last one was nighttime anyways. And you can see that that's still pretty effective. So we'll go ahead and give it another shot here. This is going to be with Freena. All right, so here we just go start the HP drain. Okay, and now we've got- okay, we just got max stacks right there, so now we can go. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, like, you guys can see, here's the rest of the time, and then it's kind of just go like that. And then every time that you activate the eye, the burst duration is less long. So you guys can just see how cool his animation is, and you can kind of see, like, how long this goes for. This animation is so sick, though. Okay, if not for, like, gameplay-wise or damage, just those animations are so cool. But yeah, you saw that we killed him way too quickly there, so, uh, we don't have all our bursts back, but we'll see how quick they just get back in a second. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of that, and I've taken a bunch of you guys' time, so let's go ahead and just, uh, let's go get our bursts back while we do some finishing closing up uh, statements. So pretty much any of them are going to work as long as you have some like similar character replacements or the characters that I've demonstrated in this video that I all think make them work pretty solidly. Not going to lie. 
Yeah, Freena can kind of do this. Okay, Freena has her burst, and then... That's fine. Look at we got some Freena off-field healing. Yeah, Sino's super energy hungry, but we would have got it if we got to use all those extra E's that I showed you at the end. Which is why I say that Sino's better in like longer fights than... Longer fights or boss fights. Just for... <coughs> just for like the sake of how you can see... Um, you get to see like the longer the fight is, the more he gets his E back and everything. Like for longer fights, I'm always... Um, if his burst duration, if I get to use the whole time of it and the enemy's still not dead, it's pretty much already ready to be reused. And like, they're almost dead so you can just kill him without the burst. Without his burst, save it for the next time you need it and then... It normally works out pretty well, so as long as the fight isn't super short, his energy recharge doesn't seem to be that much of a problem. Even, like, like you can see how much ER I have. I'm at 118. I could definitely have more ER, but it's, it's, it's not the end of the world. It works fine. Um, especially when I run him with Raiden, it's everything works out and then whenever like the cycle's over just go Raiden's ult for a bit and then you get everyone's ER back. But yeah, overall like uh, like this boost, his EM gives extra dendro application. This does all the healing and, and uh, resistance to interruption you need. This is a huge damage buff and helps do the quick bloom team by like triggering uh, some of the- by making more blooms and everything. And this just goes on with the aggravate and it, everything just kind of works in favor of buffing him. So he's definitely a character that I feel is more expensive than Ayato. So if you're just looking for someone that you really want to DPS like now at this next few pa at this next patch, and it's someone that you really um, and like you want someone that's more versatile, someone that like will be able to help you in more types of content, then you're gonna want to go Ayato. And if you want so if you just really like this character, or you want someone for like more boss fights, more Dendro type focused teams then I recommend Sina there. So pretty much every team in the game, every character in the game has some type of purpose that you can kind of make work. And those are pretty much the purposes that I'd find them for. <coughs> and, uh, oh, last thing real quickly, or if you're still here and just kind of really curious about these characters, which I feel like you'd want to, if you made it this far, you at least want to see something going on. So let me show you guys this team that I love. I showed this in my other video, but in case you didn't see that part or you didn't see the video at all, let me show you guys what's so good about this team so this team right here do we have yep we have everyone's burst i'll go ahead and show you guys right here i love showing it in this domain because this is this is the exact team that i was using to farm this domain whenever i was using it on like for <coughs> well for venti and some other characters and stuff but literally look at how perfectly this team works because ayato can reach uh, all the characters that venti sucks up Yeah, I just found out on my mic that you guys can hear the spam clicking now on that I do in like every cutscene. But okay, so just know that the time isn't counting because I was kind of taking a second to talk right here. But you can take a look at it now. So Ayato's burst lasts forever, and then you use Ganyu's burst to like everything freezes in it. Nothing's gonna move in there. And then you kind of just suck everyone together, right? And then you just hold this button, and then everything dies. So, look at that, and then Venti's burst is back, Ganyu's burst is back. There's no energy problems in that team. You just kill everyone and then it's like... <coughs> that's pretty quick. So, overall, I think that's really cool. Just in general. But yeah, that's pretty much the last thing I wanted to demonstrate for Ayato. Because that's another thing that I feel like a lot of people don't really think about, is that you can just stack his and Ganyu's burst as a support. My Ganyu just has a bunch of ER. And same thing about Venti, where like, don't even worry too much about Venti's damage, just mostly use them for a utility, then if you have the extra resources, you can focus on it. But I have 219 ER on my Ganyu, I have this, and then I run her with uh, EM and crowd damage, just for like, some slight extra damage. <coughs> but she's not, she doesn't have a crazy ratio or anything, this is just really a support build. Like, this, <laughs> this is how I have her built. Same with Venti, I have, all my Venti taunts are level 1. He has like, a level 4, 4-star uh, four weapon, he's just viridescent for swirling, and like, that's it. My Venti is at 172 ER. So, there you get to see that's a pretty good use for that, just like clearing domains where it's like a bunch of small enemies. This is a really good team for that. But yeah, pretty much calling it a day there. It's been almost a 40 minute video. I think this is the longest I've ever talked in a video. But I just want to say thank you for those of you that did make it this far. Thank you all so much for watching. I just really want to say that I appreciate all of you so far. That, um, 
that have really been supporting the channel and it means a lot to me. It's a lot of fun to make videos and I'm really glad that you guys have been enjoying them recently. So yeah, just let me know what you think down below. Let me know who you're pulling for. Let me know if you have any of these characters, how they've been treating you. And yeah, see you guys next time. See ya.